The Holy Gospel according to the 17th chapter of Matthew. Six days later, later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his faith, face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the Beloved with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they, and when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about this vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father in heaven, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It was about 40 degrees outside, and the skies were this brilliant, deep, deep blue. And the sun was setting off into the west, and the air, the air was heavy with dew. And all around me was rock, grayish tones, earth tones. It was very still. The day was as quiet as I have ever experienced a day to be. There was not a tree, not a building, not a person in sight, for in front of me was the horizons that extended afar. And in that place, and in that moment, there was nothing just peace, stillness, seemingly alone to myself. And it's just as suddenly it was gone. Voices, loud voices came blaring at me. Go. It's time to go back. It's time to go back to your reality, to where you live. At that moment, it was time to awake from that daydream. A simple daydream amongst the thousands that I think about throughout time. But I was there. I was there at that time. And there was peace for me. Even for a split second, there was peace. When was it that you have experienced this kind of total stillness, this kind of peace, this kind of quiet? When was the last time you were able to just to sit and reflect and to be in the creation of God, just listening to him? We've all had those moments, I hope and pray. Because it's those moments that will allow us to get up to the next day and start all over again. It's those kinds of daydreams that I long to have. Today is Transfiguration Sunday. We're jumping way ahead of Matthew's Gospel to the time where Peter and James and John accompany Jesus up to the mountain. I often wonder what they talked about on the way up, what they were expecting, even what was Jesus expecting. And when they got there, all of a sudden, 
There's Moses and Elijah and Jesus at the center. And Peter does what Peter does. He makes it a little bit more about himself, but then the sky opens up and his beloved son, look at him, I am pleased. And just like that, Moses and Elijah are gone. And when Peter and James and John look up, it's just Jesus, they see. And Matthew puts in alone, the word alone. Jesus was alone. See, the gospel really doesn't say how long before they made that trip back down the mountain. How long would it be that they sat there? I mean, here's three men that saw a vision that because of Jesus' own words, probably they weren't supposed to see that vision. Do not tell until after the Son of Man is raised. What was it like for them, those three men on that mountain? And Jesus looked as if he were alone. It's a lesson of very much so Jesus' teaching moment in the Gospel of Matthew here this morning. Prophets there and prophets behind. Jesus stood in front of them all. Was there a time to be able to sit, a time for everybody to reflect, to think about what just happened to them? what they just saw. Yes, this is one of Jesus' greatest teaching moments throughout his ministry. For he was not alone. Peter, James, and John were not alone. We are never alone. So I ask again, when was it the last time that you experience total stillness, absolute quiet, unbelievable peace. When was the last time you got the chance just to sit in relationship with God, in presence with God? We've all had moments. Despite everything going on around us when we feel alone or lost or inside ourselves, We struggle to find any place to go to, to struggle to find our own mountaintop, but we don't have to. It's there. If we look, if we listen, it's there. When you hear that prayers are being lifted up for you and for somebody you love by people in Costa Rica, That's a mountaintop experience. When somebody gives you a hug and tells you that how much you're loved, that's a mountaintop experience. When you need to hear or to see or touch that loved one who's gone, who's with the saints on high, and then they are there, that is a mountaintop experience. And the smiles and the winks and the, and, and the touch of family and friends that comes to us each and every day. That is a mountaintop experience. The gospel tells us they looked up and they saw Jesus and he was alone. But he wasn't. And that's the message of our gospel this morning. So the last time you were able to experience this sense of peace and calm, how did you feel? Think about it. How did you feel when you had that opportunity? And our message this morning is saying the next time you feel alone, stop. Stop what you're doing. Make it a daydream for you. Go to that place that place of stillness, unimaginable peace of love. 
And there, I'm sure, and there I guarantee that you will find a love that is so deep, so comforting, because he will be there. And Jesus will be telling you to get up. Do not be afraid. Go and do. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, another story that we learn. But it's our story as well. But before we can claim it as our own, we have to listen. We have to open our hearts to hear God's voice speaking to us. Matthew, in his words, is encouraging you and me to surround ourselves with that quietness and peace so we can listen. And when we're sitting there on our own mountaintop, God will speak to you. He will come and crystallize all those thoughts in our own minds the questions and doubts that we have, the joys and happiness that we experience, he will be part of that because that's what God wants. This is our transfiguration. This is our time to get up and not be afraid, to do what we are called to do, to be who we are called to be. This week is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of a 40-day time to put ourselves in that place, to look for the peace that can only come from God. I invite you to join all of us together as a family, to get, let God speak to us to receive the ash and the sign of the cross on your forehead. A reminder, sure, a reminder that we are dust and to dust we shall return, but also a reminder that the stillness, the quiet, the peace waits for you. A reminder that it's time for God. So each tomorrow we may rise up each tomorrow we may go out and do the will of God. Each tomorrow we will be able to be in God's presence. For he's calling you, and you, and you, and me. This is our transfiguration. This is who we are called to be. Our mountaintop is there. God is waiting for us. He's waiting to speak to you and me. Amen.